Hey guys, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Custom Finishes by Pam in one of my favorite places to be in my paint booth. And I get so many questions after my lives about um, how my paint booth is put together and how did it come about and things like that. So I decided to do a live today to tell you guys how to put together your own paint booth. Um, it's very simple and not anything hard. A lot of the pieces came from big box stores like Harbor Freight or Home Depot or uh, Walmart or Sam's Club or something like that or Amazon. So you can get all the parts and pieces at lots of different places but I'm just going to kind of go over it right quick and if you have questions they may or may not show up. I don't know why sometimes my comments don't show up but they don't. Okay, so we're going to start with the body of it. I'm going to turn it up, and I'm going to show you. The body of my paint booth is um, its just an old, easy-up tent that I've probably had at least 20 or 25 years. Um, uh, I've had it forever. It has a nice metal frame, so it's very sturdy, and it goes up higher in the peak, and it's a 10 by 10. Okay, um... The sides, I'm going to turn this around. I've got so much light in here, it's hard for you to see. The sides, hey, Ellen. Hey, Sandy. The sides are drop cloths. I think they're 10 by 12 drop cloths. They're about $15.99 um, at Harbor Freight. They're just standard drop cloths. I've also used plastic for the sides, um, but the drop cloths are better in that it breathes a little bit more. And if you use plastic on the sides, it has a tendency, if you overspray it all, it'll build up and then it'll flake away. And the air from your sprayer will cause it to flake away. If you look closely, I don't know if you can see, but I use clamps to hold my sides up because after they've been up for a while, I take them down and get rid of the drop cloths and go at it again. Uh, something to remember is not only do you need the tops and the side, but you need a floor. My floor is a drop cloth so that I don't get on my concrete, but I also use big pieces of cardboard. Um, you can get them at furniture stores. You can get them at grocery stores. Um, thank you, Sandy. That's too sweet. You can get them lots of places, and that way you don't ruin your drop cloth that's on the floor, and it makes it easier for cleanup because even though you may be really good, there's going to be some overspray, and that way it helps keep it clean. Another thing you got to have is ventilation. Um, I have a squirrel cage ventilator over in the corner of mine that takes the air and turns it over and it has filters on both sides. So it filters the air coming in and it filters the air going out. Um, that way you can make sure that you're not sending paint air out into the rest of your warehouse or in your garage or where you put it up. But if you just wanted a quick pop up, you can do that. Um, lighting, that's another thing. Hi, Jennifer. I have a lot of light in here. I have LED lights on the sides. I have LED lights in the top. I'm going to show you. I have them all over. I have LEDs on the floor, big LEDs. Um, and besides all of those lights that I have all around, I also have my trusty Ryobi light. This may blind you, but I want you to see. It is really, really bright. And if I am painting a piece that I feel like I've got a dark corner or something, it's a Ryobi one. I can sit it anywhere. It's also got a hook so I can hang it. Um, again, I don't get any kickback from any of these people. I'm just telling you an easy way to make it workable for you. Um, this fills in any light gaps that I may have. Another thing to remember is you got to have room. In a 10 by 10, it's great. I have a work table in here. I think it's called a centipede work table. Um, it folds up. Uh, my work area is always a mess, very, very messy. Um, but this centipede work table is heavy duty enough. I have just a piece of MDF on the top of it. Um, it will hold just about any piece of furniture that I want to put up there. Um, you'll notice I keep cardboard on the top of it because I don't want to ruin my, uh, there's no point in painting over and over my piece of MDF that's on the top, so I just change out the cardboard every so often. Um, the lights, I, the square lights that I are up top, 
I got at Amazon, but you can get them at Home Depot as well. Hey, Diane. Hey, Amy. Uh, the tube lights, actually, you can get them lots of places like Sam's Club, things like that. They're LED, so they last infinitely. Um, and then, you know, the Ryobi one came from Home Depot. But the lights, when I got them, they were a little more expensive than they are now. They're pretty inexpensive now. Um, and the tube lights, you can get them very cheaply. Uh, at I think Sam's Club has them on sale on a regular basis, but you want to have plenty of light in here so that you can see. Um, can I, I wish I could tell you that the spray doesn't get on the lights, but sometimes I have two or three pieces of furniture in here at a time, and before I move it out, I'll cover it up. If it's dry, I'll cover it up with a plastic tablecloth so I don't get any overspray on it, but... Sadly, I don't know if you can see, but look at my light right here. Can you see the overspray on it? It's all over it right there. But every once in a while, I just get out my mineral spirits and a little scrubby, and I scrub it off. Even though I don't have to have mineral spirits because it's water-based, it speeds up the process, and I clean them all up good, and then I overspray on them again. <laughs> um, you do want to make sure, though, that you wear a respirator. Dixie Bell products are no VOCs, but anytime you're aerating something, you don't want to get that in your lung. And you can get the respirators at just about anywhere. Amazon, you can get them at Walmart, you can get them lots of different places. You can tell mine is gross. And you just change out the filters every so often. These caps pop off and they change out and it really makes it easy. Um, if most of the time, in fact, right now you can probably see where my respirator's been on my face um, because I am religious about wearing it. You also want to make sure you have things in here like uh, baby wipes are good to have because you always have boo-boos, paper towels, things like that. Your brushes in a jar. Um, make sure you've got power underneath the edges so that you can power your sprayer or whatever. A lot of people use compressor sprayers. When I used my compressor sprayer, I had my compressor outside the tent and just got a longer hose and ran it under through, under the edge. It made it much easier, and it's not quite as loud. It's loud enough through the edge, but if it's in the room with you, it's really loud. Um, music, necessity, but um, if you're looking to create a paint booth, this maybe will help you because... This really works well for me, and I roll over a lot of kitchens. I do at least a couple of kitchens a month, and I don't know if you guys saw my racks. I think some of you did, but I'll show you my racks out here. These are, these are my racks. They've got doors on them, and I have two of them. They hold about 24 to 32 doors a piece. They have four sides, and you'll notice that some of the legs are a little bit longer than others, and they're made for different types of doors. So, um, if you're doing kitchens, they are a necessity, absolute necessity. Um, I am going to spray a door for you so you kind of get an idea, and you'll see my fancy setup for my spraying of my doors. I went to a thrift store, and I bought a stool that's got a beautiful little sunflower painted on it and I use a towel over it so that I don't scratch my wood. I've already got one side of these doors painted and clear coated and they're numbered so that I can reinstall them and this is the other side of the door. And typically I use my stool because it's a great height for me to spray my doors and it's quick and easy and very painless. Hey Terry! So, um, when you're getting ready to spray your doors, they, something very important, you wanna make sure that you mix your water or your flow trawl with your paint. Um, I usually use bottled water because out here where we live, we have very hard water. If you mix it with your paint, your paint stinks to high heaven. I mean, like you can't even imagine. Once you turn it, once you uh, put it in there and fasten it up, it's terrible. I've already got my paint. I keep a lot of containers like this. Um, so that I can pre-mix my paint. They're labeled on the top. Um, I go ahead and pre-mix my paint so it's ready to be sprayed. I also use one of these. You can buy these in bulk at lots of different places. I think these may have come from Amazon or Harbor Freight or one of those. If it's the first time you've opened your paint and you don't want to 
and, and you don't want to strain it, that's fine. But every single time paint goes in my sprayer, I use a strainer just because I want to make sure that I have no lumps that's going to clog my sprayer because there's nothing that irritates me more than a clogged sprayer, especially when I'm in the middle of a set of cabinets. Um, another thing you want to make sure that you've got plenty of, stir sticks. When you're getting paint ready to spray, do not shake it. If you shake it, you're going to make bubbles in it, and that makes it not spray correctly. You'll end up spraying bubbles onto your piece, and when they pop as your paint is drying, then you've got problems because then you're going to have little polka dots on your piece. Um, paint stirrers are inexpensive. Get as many of them as you can and keep them up. Stir your paint. Strain your paint. Um, since the sprayer is so loud, I may not spray, but I did want to kind of give you guys a heads up on creating a paint booth. Very easy. If you have any questions, um, like I say, my paint booth is 10 by 10, so I can easily fit three pieces of furniture in here at a time. And the Erlex sprayer that I use it has so little overspray. I can spray three in here without getting overspray on the others. Um, it, it breathes well. I do use the clamps to keep everything closed up. Uh, if you want to let it breathe a little, you can open up the sides because they're just clamped shut. I overlap them and then clamp them shut. And like I say, you, it makes for a very, very nice place to be. And um, it works really well for spraying. I hope everybody gets a chance to make your own paint booth because it's a fun place to work and it keeps your pieces clean. You don't have to worry about um, there being gnats because when I used to spray in our other warehouse or outside, oh my gosh, your paint is drying and you get gnats or dust or something like that on it. This you don't have to worry about. If you keep your paint booth clean, you usually don't get any kind of debris on your pieces and I don't know if you can see in this light but you can see when you're spraying it gives you such a great finish I mean I could never achieve this kind of finish with um, a brush Sandy now you need a paint booth well if you guys have questions I'm at 44 marketplace custom finishes by by, by Pam and I've got to get back to my doors so have a great weekend and I'll see you next week Thanks.